In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing my settings for the Logitech G920 in Forza Horizon 5. Now, this also applies for the G29 and G923. The G923 has True Force, which updates the force feedback more accurately to the game you are playing. It's only supported in a select amount of games, but FH5 is one of them. Now, saying that my settings shown in this video will still work for those people on the newer model. Now, the settings I'm going to be showing are good for me, but you may want to change it as well. But generally, this is a good baseline. Now, let's get on to our first alteration, and that is Logitech G Hub. And here is the G Hub software. Now, if you haven't downloaded it, I'd recommend it. I've got a link in the description if you want to get it yourself and it will give you more functions with the wheel to make it better to your liking. So let's dive in. For example, with my account, you can see I've got two devices, but you'll probably only have one if you've only got one Logitech device. Click on this and you'll be able to see you have got different settings and presets. The first one is for assignments. Now, I personally haven't changed anything in the assignments, but you may want to. But um, yeah, this is obviously to your preference. There are many things you can change, like the commands, the keys, the actions. We've got different apps we can use through here. But I'm going to be showing the settings with the steering wheel and the pedal sensitivity. With the steering wheel, I've got the operating range set at 700. This is not stock. Usually at standard, it's at 900 degrees, but I find that this is too wide and not realistic. So at 700, it's a pretty good middle ground to make it more like a real car. Regarding the sensitivity, this is stock at 50, and the centering spring strength is also stock, but this is at 20. If you have the G923 True Force, you'll actually have more functions to choose from, which will make it a little bit more realistic into the game you're playing. But obviously, since I don't have that model, it's not here. Going into the pedal sensitivity, the clutch is stock at 50, the brake is upped from 50 to 100, and the accelerator is stock at 50. Now the reason the brake is set to 100 is because the spring in the brake is too stiff. Now they did actually fix this in the G923 a bit more, they used a more lenient spring, but people still find it actually a bit too aggressive. Now if you do want to, you can physically mod the board. Now, I haven't done that, but many people have. I recommend watching a few guides on people who do to get an understanding of it. Now, those are my settings for Logitech G Hub. Now, I'm going to jump into Forza Horizon 5 where we can adjust it there too. Alrighty guys, so here we are. We are going to be looking into the settings. So, we are going to go into settings and then we're going to go into advanced controls where we can change all of the wheels individual settings. I'm going to be going through all of these and showing you what I personally think is good and other things that you may want to change. Starting off, we have vibration. I'd be leaving this on. Invert vertical look. Leave this on if you want to. It's your preference. Mouse free look. Leave this on. It's also your preference. Invert force feedback. Leave this off unless you really want to confuse your sensors. Steering axis dead zone inside is at zero and the steering axis dead zone outside is at 100. I've got steering linearity set at 58. This can also be your preference, but I've got it here due to the way the wheel feels at opposite lock and also at the center. I'll read the description so you can understand. So it says lower values provide more accuracy near the center, but less accuracy near full lock. Higher values provide more accuracy near full lock, but less accuracy near the center. 50 is a linear mapping, but as I just showed, 58 works for me. The acceleration axis dead zone inside is at zero, and the outside version of this is at 100. The deceleration axis dead zone inside is at zero, and the outside version of this is also at 100. With the clutch axis dead zone inside, I've got the first set at 15. Now this is due to if you actually rest your foot on it, so if you put it at zero, you may engage it without not wanting to. With the clutch axis dead zone outside, I've got it set at 100 because at 90, what you will see is that it will disengage quicker with your foot let off. I put it at 100 so it feels more accurate to a real car. The e-brake axis dead zone inside is set to zero instead of the stock what looks to be, I think, what is it, 10? Yeah, so that is 10, but I've got it at zero. So when you press the button, or if you have a hydraulic handbrake, what that means is you will be able to get the feedback from pressing it or using it much quicker. 
the e-brake axis dead zone outside is at 100. I've left it at stock. You'd probably want to as well. Now, here is where I've done some serious changes. The vibration scale is now at 0.2. This is because it feels a bit too jarring at the stock amount. So if you don't want that amount of vibration, then choose this. With the force feedback, I've got it at 0.4. This is much lower than the standard because I also feel like this is too jarring at its stock amount. With the center spring scale, I've got it set up at two. Now I'll read the description so you can understand why I've done this. So it says this sets the dynamic centering force of your steering wheel. Larger values provide a stronger centering force while lower values provide a lighter centering force. Lowering this uh, actually may cause steering oscillation. Now, because I turned down the vibration and force feedback, it means that turning this up makes the car feel more realistic. If you turn it down, it'll probably feel a little too floaty. With the wheel damper scale, I've got it set at 0.8. This is due to making it feel more realistic to a real car with power steering. Because if you turn this up to the max, it will feel like it doesn't have it at all. With the mechanicals trail scale, I've got it set up at 2, because if you have it set lower, you'll find that the car will want to understeer. So that's why I've got it at higher, so this doesn't happen. Now we've got force feedback minimum force. Now I'm going to also read the description for this too, because it's kind of important. So it says this sets the pneumatic trail aligning torque, which scales the buildup of force feedback with lateral load. Larger values provide an aggressive tyre response with lateral input and a heavier feeling. Lower values provide a more linear curve and a lighter feeling. Now, because I'm not that strong, I want it a little lighter. And if I set it up too high, it would be too difficult to drive. With the force feedback load sensitivity, I've got it at 0.7, just so you don't feel the tires as much as well. And what it means is you can control the torque better. Regarding road feel scale, I've got it at 0.3 because if you have it high, you'll feel the bumps in the road and driving at high speed, that isn't good. You may actually lose control, so I've got it lower. With the off-road feel scale, I've got it at 0.5. Now this actually is very similar to the road feel scale with the bumps you will go over. So if you want to drive fast off-road and not lose control, lower this. And the last is the steering sensitivity. Now obviously this is how sensitive the wheel is to use. Now I've got it stock because I actually like it like this instead of turning it up or down. It may be too vague if you turn it down and it may be too sharp if you turn it up. Now that the wheel is effectively set up in both G-Hub and FH5, let's go for a drive. Alrighty guys, so here we are. We have got our wheel fully set up for the drive. Now like in the FH4 setup for the G920, I was driving an FPV GTF. Now I'm driving the same again because I wanted to show the similarities of the driving dynamics of this car compared to the other setup. It's very similar, but there are a few small changes. For example, the force feedback is a little higher than last time, so it's going to feel a little bit more strong, but not by much at all. Some guy in an E36 ready to go up the mountain. Yes, I'm going to be driving up the volcano and doing a little bit of a time attack with this car with the settings. You can also see I'm using the shifter. Now, this is optional. You have to buy it separately if you get the wheel, if it be the G920, G29 or G923. You can also see that it's on the left side instead of the right. Now, this is because, well... I'm Australian and we drive on the right side of the vehicle with our gear selector to the left. But obviously if you're American, don't try this, it's going to feel weird. So change it to the other side and you'll get an awesome experience. So now what I'm going to do is shut up and hoon this thing up the volcano. It's going to take me a few minutes to get up to the top, but then I'll update you when I'm done.
Alrighty guys, so we are now done. We are at the top of the volcano and while that wasn't probably my fastest drive up there, it definitely was very enjoyable. Now you would have been able to see I was driving in first person instead of third. Now I see a lot of people actually driving like this when they're recording. Honestly, to me it doesn't feel natural, so that's why I'm in first person. I'm also not in this mode because when you go in here, you can't see your wheel, so you can't get a reference of where the car is actually turning. And that's why I've got the steering set to 700 degrees, because it's like the way it is in FH5. Now I wouldn't say that this is a dedicated drift setup, but it doesn't work too bad. What I might do is just try some drifting with this car down the mountain. Sorry car, yes that was a bit of limiter bashing, but um, it definitely got the job done. Now this is not a drift car in any way, it's not set up for it. It's on racing slicked, race suspension, and unlike those cars going by, um, yeah, doesn't have drift suspension. Now saying that, if I were to jump into a drift car, which I won't be doing today, just for the link for the video, it would feel better. Now obviously in this video I did show settings that I personally feel are good and also some that you may want to change. So if you do want to change them, definitely go for it to tailor it to your liking. Alrighty guys, well that is where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully you like this setup guide and also this drive I've done to show how it works. If you want to see more from me then make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.